Swartz, who mag in the building, man. Up, Make some noise for that. Man. Love, <laughs> well, she, who, we in his building, really. Yeah, as yeah. you can see, we're not yeah, at we uh, Abstract Studio. Not coming live from Abstract Studio. He was nice enough to let us come to his studio and uh, interview him today. We yeah, appreciate man. him. Definitely, yeah. definitely appreciate the hospitality. Brother. I mean, so uh, we in the midst of this holiday shopping. This holiday, this, <laughs> right. I mean, it doesn't feel like the holidays, but it seems to not be stopping anybody out here. The no, world's going crazy. You know they going on. I mean, on. I mean how's, your, uh, how's your holidays going, bro? Shit, I just, so far. I've got, like, one more people to buy for. One, one more people to buy for. One more person <laughs> to buy for. And then, I, um, and then I'm good, you feel me? After that, you know what I'm saying? I ain't really too pressed. I got to go do that. And I look. Like, I'm not even really feeling it this year. I'm keeping it a bean. Like it's. I like. I mean, my son asked for something so simple that it's like he don't even make it exciting for me. Like to go shop or nothing. Like, but it's cool though. You know, it's holidays. You know, love is love. Be with your family. All that good yeah, shit. Yeah. Man. So, bro, how's your holidays going so far, bro? How's it looking this week? It's good, man. Um, I'm Jewish. My wife is Costa Rican, so we celebrate both. Okay. okay. So the kids love it. Yeah. yeah. Massive presents. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's the whole world. We love Hanukkah. Now it's time for Christmas, and they're good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everyone's good. That's what's up. Uh, yeah, that's good. I mean, how about you? What's up? What's up with you? Me? Uh, yeah. I'm not. I'm trying to avoid the holidays at all costs. But you can't, because I got small children, so we did the whole Christmas thing, all that blase, blase. <laughs> yeah, still, all, that jazz. <laughs> all that, all that jazz. I still, I'm still a conspiracy theorist. I believe this is all just set for us to spend money, blah blah blah. But Most I enjoy my family. I let the kids have their great years. They're like you only got a couple more years left of this <laughs> before it's just dinner. <laughs> <laughs> So, dinner but, and a movie. Yeah, we're going to do dinner and a movie. Turn into a, a cheap fa- date. Oh, family. Turn into a cheap date. Right, family. right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, we're definitely watching Elf. You got to catch gotta Elf. Watch Elf. You gotta yeah, watch you, Elf. Got, you definitely got to cr- catch a, a Christmas story. Yeah, for sure. I got that thing sure. permanently downloaded on my every, YouTube every account. It ain't, right. it ain't right if you don't watch it every year. Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah, other than you got that, any pl- Y'all got any plans for New Year's? I mean, I might be having a a, a fiasco. Well, you got that a fiasco? A, fiasco. a fiesta. <laughs> it's gonna turn into a fiasco. <laughs> At this point, yes, the turn fiasco. <laughs> yeah, it's looking like it turned into a fiasco. More than ten people, it's a fiasco. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, somebody want me to do a party, but I'm still debating. This COVID out here hitting hard right now. I know a yeah. lot of people who who yeah, got caught up, and yeah. I've been luckily, I've been <laughs> lucky avoidance. enough to avoid it so yeah, far. So. Yeah, so for sure. How about you, man? Nothing at all planned, but probably just chilling with the kids and working. <laughs> yeah. Ain't too much to do this year. Yeah. Keep it safe. Please be responsible. I'm going to see some friends tomorrow for Christmas. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. Keep it light. Yeah. Keep it light. That's yeah. what I'm trying Bare to do. Bare minimum. Yeah. Bare minimum, baby. Okay. But, um, yeah, no, but we in here, man. Just OTS podcast. We got the homie. Rob Swartz in the building. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, who mag? Who mag? Who, who mag? Who you mag? kicking it? You want me to kick nah, it? Nah, I don't know. I mean, who it. mag it's distribution? Stuff. Who mag worldwide? Why? 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 <laughs> <laughs> From everything, like, you get into a lot of everything, man. Yeah. How, how'd you get started? I, I mean, like, I, I, in my fact, I'm going to take it from this. <laughs> who mag, what is the meaning behind that name, who mag? Um, Where did it come from? I guess that goes back to where I got started. Okay. <laughs> um, <Yeah>. I guess <clears throat> right after college, I started working at Polygram Records. Okay. I actually worked in distribution. I put out Jay Z's first single in my lifetime. Where? Jerry the Damager, Blase Blase, Fuzzy Fresh, Be Me Mine. There's a young buck, you know, through college and shit. And, um, and got into songwriting. Me and my boy moved out to the West Coast to work with some of the baby faces, artists, and songwriters. Okay. Um, 
didn't work out how we expected. We both moved back. I ended up getting a job from a fraternity brother on Wall Street. We kind of fell into Wall Street. Oh, okay. And so I'm done with music, man. So I was pretty much, I was like really struggling out there on the West Coast. So what year was this around when you were on Wall Street? Um, was you down there with the wolves? <laughs> <laughs> was you down there on that, the, the wolves on Wall Street? The wolves came after me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. Uh, nah, um, so gave up music. So I'm just going to do finance now. I got a 9 o'clock job. My mom's proud of me for once. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Was happy. And then it took me two, three months. And realized that like if you're in music, like that's it. You can't you can't leave. Right. So I started on a website in two thousand one. Mm -hmm. And we called it Pool Mag because my boy moved to LA with. Like mm -hmm. it was me, him and this other guy, Pat's the three of us. Mm -hmm. We're working together and we came up with the idea like no one knew who my artist was, so let's call it Who Mag and we were surrounded with all these celebrities. Now nowadays it's no big deal. Mm -hmm. But two thousand one, nineteen years ago. Right. Twenty years ago at this point. There weren't a lot of hip hop websites at all. No one was really doing it. Either you're right. a major website like a Rolling Stone or Source or, type thing. Yeah, yeah. So that's what we called it Humag. So we could help get my boy discovered and put all these people, celebrities around it. So you wonder who this guy is who's in the mix. Mm -hmm. And that's how I got started in 2001. Oh, okay. Yeah. Dope, dope. Yeah. So you've been in this game a long time. Yeah. I'm looking around, I see. Just history, man. Hip hop history. background. Just entertainment history, really. Not just movies. You got uh, legendary boxing matches. You got legendary concerts. Jay Dilla weekend. All types of stuff going on. I mean, how did uh, how did that branch off? Who Mag branch off into like movies and interviews and? <laughs> so the idea was. Just get money up to do a print magazine. Mm -hmm. So we started as the website, blew up, man, because I was really strategic thinking of how to launch this. I, I had a real strategic idea. Uh, I had this kind of mentor, and he interviewed Randy Jackson from American Idol. This is okay. season two, mm -hmm. biggest show in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he was telling me, oh, I just interviewed Randy Jackson for this magazine called Hits Magazine, big music magazine. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh man, can I use it too? He's like, no, I already sold it. And I'm like, yeah, but did you sell the internet rights? Right. 2001. Right. He's like, well, what's that? Cause I'm, right. I'm like, yeah, it's a whole other thing. No, it's complete. <laughs> so he's like, I don't think I did. I was like, how much do you want for it? He goes, I don't know, 100 bucks. Give him 100 bucks. Right. And launched with Randy Jackson. Oh, oh wow. $100. $100. Launched my whole entire thing. Um, That's crazy. So we had an investor on board that kept toying with us that he's going to invest money. Mm -hmm. So he wanted to get Dr. Dre. So a friend of mine was Dr. Dre's, actually Cherry Johnson. She's a Punky Brewster. Punky, mm -hmm. big show, Punky Brewster's best friend in the show. Her brother's Melman, who's Dr. Dre's right-hand man. Word. So we went to L.A. It was all set up. Some craziness happened. I don't want to put it out there, but mm -hmm. some craziness happened that day. We are actually at Dr. Dre's house. And the craziness happened. So we went around inside the house. That somebody had a gun and something was going. Oh, and I won't say who on camera. But anyway. Right, right, right. right, right. But anyway, um, yeah, so I came back, defeated a little bit, still trying to figure out how to get the money for the magazine. I had a guy with a camera. He just wanted to follow me around and film. So we started filming stuff. So the next thing I was putting video clips up on their website, humag.net. And next thing you know, I was like, yo, let's, I got this great idea. Let's put all these clips together into a DVD to give it with the presentation for the business plan right. to get the money for the mag for the print magazine. Uh -huh. So we made this DVD up and then we found the guy was BSing. Again I'm defeated. But I had this D V D and I'm like and I was like <clears throat> I don't know what to do with this D V D so I've never been involved in film. Uh, it was just a weird coincidence that day I used to go to Barnes and Noble every week just to go read the Billboard magazine. Mm -hmm. I would never buy it. I would never have the money to buy it. I was broke. <laughs> you know? yeah. but I that was go, back in the day when you could just go back in and read it. Back in the day, I would yeah. go there every day yeah. and read it, and I found this book. In fact, this is the actual book. I found this book. Oh, oh. Sorry. It's our phone battle. Um, That's live, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Musician out of 2005. And in the back, it's all these places that distribute DVDs. Oh. You see, I, have, I put notes. This is probably here. Made. Holy shit. I made up a thousand DVDs. I mailed them to every single one. Mm -hmm. 
and all of these, all of these, two of them picked it up. So, and then two, I became the first DVD magazine in Walmart, Target, Best Buy, Netflix, mm -hmm. of the first hip hop DVD ever when Netflix was the mail in, yeah. Blockbuster. Yeah. And it became huge. Wow. So, 2000, this is 2005. So which DVD was that that uh, started it off? It's the Humag DVD Volume One. That was the, there's the Suncoast. Was, I couldn't find it in any stores. Every store was sold out the day it came out. Every store with the Walmart, Target, Best Buy, and you, Sam you, Goody. There's no bullshit because around that time, like the internet was around, but it wasn't like you know what I'm saying yeah. like, going crazy. And then here's, because here is a blockbuster. There's the actual blockbuster sticker on it. Yeah. When they shut down, I took it off the shelf. Uh, yeah, this is make this. This one's not even open. You should. You had to do some shopping for that for sure. That was yeah. 2005. So you said, um, you know, you've been in it for a while. Mm -hmm. You said a couple times you felt defeated, like like more than once. You feel me? And you said, but you also said once you're in music, you can't quit. So it's like the the heart is there, the feeling is there, and everything is there. But you also went through shit where it's like I'm about to stop this shit. Yeah. But yeah. when did you get to a point where you was like, yo, I'm really doing some shit, like? Because in that time, you probably did a lot of shit within the time for you to make it feel like you wanted to do it and keep yeah. going, even if after you felt defeated. But what was the moment where you was like, for you personally, internally, was like, yo, this yeah. is nuts. 2009, October 9th, 2009, was the day I walked out of Merrill Lynch after being there for 10 years. Because Colors TV, after this DVD, a network in Europe reached out to me um, called... Uh, It's called. It was a network in Europe. It was on Sky TV. Reached out to me and they asked if I can turn this into a um, TV show. <coughs> so I was about to do volume two, <coughs> and um, I told my camera guy, I was so excited, like, "Yo, man, we got this network reached out to me. And they want to make it into a TV show. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is great." And he goes, "Oh, I got some bad news for you." I'm like, "What's up? I'm leaving to Vegas in two days to shoot porn." <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, you can't. I got a TV offer. He goes, nah, man. I'm going to Vegas since you're born. I'm like, oh, man. Turn so, it down, no I said, well, come, <laughs> come to my house, you know, install on my computer, install Final Cut. I, right. never, I already had to produce music. I could already use Logic. Right. And I sat with him the entire time he made this. Right. So I kind of like, I mean, I produced it, but I, but I watched him. Because he could never learn how to use his Final Cut 3. Right. You know, yeah, so early. this is before YouTube. YouTube was two thousand. It was around the time YouTube came out. Yeah, it was, was two thousand five. Yeah. So it was around that time, and so nothing was on YouTube. Right. So um, I bought a Final Cut for Dummies. I taught myself how to edit, and I made a TV show, and that went in one hundred twenty million households on Sky TV in Europe. Mm -hmm. And then I tried to bring it back to the U.S. I had a hard time. A lot of little channels picked it up. I was like thirteen different channels in the U.S. All like territorial. Like okay. Trenton. Regional. Yeah. yeah. New York. We're in New York. Yeah. yeah. On Eminem, Philly, Las Vegas. You know, but when Colors TV picked us up, that was our first national network. They were on Dish TV, and I was looking at my paycheck and how much I was making versus how much I was making at Merrill Lynch, and all the drama I had to deal with at Merrill Lynch. I was having like six different bosses that I was telling them what to do every day, and okay. managing a team of six people at the same time. Right. I was like, I told my wife, I said, you know, this is it. I'm taking my last leap of faith. Yeah. And my daughter was just born. She was nine months. I never got to really see her that much because I'm always working and stressed and angry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was it. Done. And I decided I'm going to figure this out. And I was already starting to get hired to do music videos. I did about 35 music videos. I was doing the dopest videos. I wanted to watch my videos. Cool. Nobody was touching my videos. You know what I'm saying? Who well, some of the people, that, some of the artists that you work with when you were shooting uh, videos? Back in the day. I mean, I just recently did Papa Roach and The Who. Mm -hmm. Did you? Mm -hmm. For the movie Retaliators, I produced a movie called Retaliators. One okay. of the producers, and it's got 17 million views from a, a year ago. Okay. I just we did. Check it out, Retaliators, man. Yeah, make yeah, sure you check it out. I just did a video for the Force MDs. I guess I wrote the song for Fine mm -hmm. With You, and I shot the video this year. And the song, SoulTracks.com, nominated for Song of the Year. Mm -hmm. For that, I didn't have, I didn't do a video since like 2013. Because oh, I stopped. Wow. Yeah. I stopped. Because I just. I know, it's, it's just, you have to figure out how to, what evolution is. One thing, a changing factor in my life was when, you know, when I first started getting brokers on my TV shows, mm -hmm. because a broker we shopped with me, said, yo, we like Who Mag TV, so mm -hmm. it was everywhere. 
like, yeah, you know, it's my hip hop show. He goes, stop calling it a hip hop show. It's a half hour music program. You have to learn how to present this. How to talk, you know, talk that lingo. You have to understand. And then, yeah, so when I started like learning that side of the game, right. changed everything. But yeah, I never look back, man. I left and I've been through struggles, even after leaving that job. And, Y'all know how much this industry changes. As soon yeah. as you get into something, something else happens and you're back at square one. Yeah. Best streaming came yeah. and just Best go a whole other yeah, but monkey like, wrench. Yeah, but I was the first hip hop network on Roku. I launched iFame in 2012. Right. I saw that before anybody else saw it. Right. Right. It was Music Babel. Was music Babel was the first music channel. I can't take that for Music Babel. Mm -hmm. But they were a rock channel. Okay. I'm the first one to put hip hop, R&B. I'm the one to put the first urban drama on Roku okay. in 2012, eight years ago. Okay. So, Three, four years to keep it clear what Roku even was. Yeah, yeah, they were still trying to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. well, what? Oh, no, I want to say, uh, iFame, it was iFame TV? Mm -hmm. Independent I Film and Music Entertainment was the program. Oh, okay, iFame TV. Um, I was looking through a few, a few shows on there. I wanted to ask you about uh, Dancing on the Air. Mm -hmm. Dancing on the Air. Man, that had some legends on there. They had, they had. Fucking Slick Rick and Dougie Fresh without the jewelry on that, John. They was young as hell. I mean, were you actually a part of that, or you just got the rights to it? That's a good question. When I was younger, uh -huh. I used to watch it. Okay. When I was, like, in high school, maybe junior high. I never was on the show. I had nothing to do with the original show. Okay. 2012, they brought the story trying to bring the show back. Uh -huh. And there was a lot of drama internally, and then the original producer, Mike Nice, reached out to me and through a, someone referred him to me because okay. of my editing because okay. I was doing the music videos and stuff at that time. Mm -hmm. And then um, they asked if I could help. And I we had some discussions. I was contemplating it. I mean, it would be such a great idea to go back to working on a legendary show. Right. So we worked out a deal. Part of the deal was to get to air all the old shows on my network. Okay. So I have the entire catalog exclusive. Kelly Ripa was the host of the show. When she was Yeah, that's why I'm looking at the that show was, like... Donna's <laughs> first TV appearance, Duran Duran's first TV appearance, G uh, Tupac, Heavy D, Gangsta, Bobby Brown with the leather Bobby suit. Brown, yeah, <laughs> so I brought oh, it. Legendary. So I brought it back. It took me a few years. Yeah. But we aired on Fuse. I was I directed the show. Okay. <clears throat> Saturday Morning Fever was a reality show based off of me and my guys making the show. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's just dope. screenshots from the actual Fuse TV website with me on it. All right. Yeah, so it was cool, man. I talked to Mike all the time. Love Mike. He's like a mentor to me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just a, it was man. And where, what are, where is that show based out of? Philly. Oh, it was based out of Philly. Okay. It was filmed in Camden. Really? In Philly, back in the eighties and nineties. Oh, it started shit. in nineteen eighty one. In nineteen eighty seven, it went national. It became Dance Bar of the USA. Mm -hmm. It aired from eighty seven to ninety two. Man, because they got some classic shit on there. I was watching that shit like all morning. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So, um, well, um, okay, I got, I got to think about because it's a lot. Like it's like, it's like it's so much of a plethora in here that I want to talk about, but I got to keep it minimal because it's like you know, what I mean, we only got but so much time, right? right? So, out of all, like out of everything, what you would say was like the most memorable? Because I can't ask you what's your favorite because out of all this shit. It'd be probably impossible to pick a favorite, but like, what, 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 thing, what happened with any of this that you just like always going like the thing that you always gonna remember like vividly from one of these experiences? You know, what? a lot of people base it off of who's the most famous. Like, they go, oh, who's the most famous person you interviewed? Right. And that's different for every person. Yeah, you know what I'm saying because I can show you an interview and you may have never heard of them. Right. I interviewed Pitbull. I interviewed Katy Perry. Right. I interviewed mm -hmm. so many people. But my favorite interviews I've done. One would have to be Nucleus, because that was the first record I ever bought, Jam on it. And oh, yeah, so that's in the middle. That's, yeah, yeah, and right yeah, after I, like I did that. an interview with them, Chili B passed away right afterwards. Damn. And it's yeah. me and Cosmo Rest talk all the time. Like, we're homies now. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy, because I grew up idolizing them. This was the first record I ever bought. And I had no idea what they even looked like, because it was cartoon. All their albums were cartoons. Right, right, right. right. Um, one of the coolest guys I've interviewed, this would throw people off, but... Besides Pitbull was mad cool, I would say Sean Astin, the actor. He was okay. in Lord of the Rings. He was in Stranger Things, Rudy. Um, okay, Goonies. okay. Yeah. Rudy, Rudy. He was Rudy. The he was Rudy. The bull, man. The football. The football. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, right. but he was in, he was, the, um, not Bilbo, he was the, um, Sam, the Hobbit. Okay, all right, yeah. yeah, yeah. Eyes. So, wow. It's a crazy story how that came about, because we just 
we got that Randy Jackson interview, and we we're like the biggest website at that time. Like everyone was coming to me. Right. But my thing was hip hop. So, in and I was getting more into like the J. Rudy Damagers, the mm-hmm. Necros. Like we had like real, real hip hop, yeah, yeah, hardcore yeah. hip hop, boom yeah. stuff. And then like I saw our viewers were going down a bit. I'm like, man, I gotta get another Randy Jackson. Who would I get? And this was during season the third hot, the third Lord of the Rings movie was coming out on DVD. And I told my wife, I said, I'm gonna get me a Hobbit. <laughs> she, goes, she laughed and like whatever. I'm like, no, I'll watch. I'm gonna get me a Hobbit. So I literally stalked the Hobbits. Sean Astin came to Philly. Mm-hmm. I was speaking of Philly. Looked it up. Sharon Pinkinson, who runs the film department of Philly, was doing it. It's funny. I saw Sean. I saw Sharon um, a month ago. I told her right. story for the first time ever. Right. This is like 2005, 2000. Yeah. No, 2003. So, anyway, um, got there. Sharon's like super nice. She's like, listen, he said he'll do the interview, but he's he's speaking to all these people. It's like a three hour thing. And mm-hmm. then he's going to sign these books, which may take a while. So if you want to wait, he said he'll do it. So I'm like, yeah. So he, he spoke for about three hours. It was pretty long. And then the line to sign the book, there, it's right there, there and back again. Mm-hmm. It was about three more hours. So I waited there, waited, waited. Now it's like 3 a.m. He had two little girls, probably five, and three and five, and mm-hmm. little girls. Mm-hmm. I was like, come on, Daddy, I want to go to bed. <laughs> and she, I remember he goes to the girls. I always remember this. She goes, see this man right here? He waited all day for this interview. I'm going to make sure I give him a great interview. That's and he gave cool. me a great interview. And I just always respected that. Yeah. yeah. And then, then I went to work. Because he could have easily walked off like, I got my kids. or He could have had any excuse to not Which do people it. have done. Yeah. Right, right. But then I went to the onering.net, the, web, the biggest website in the world at the time. OMG, Sean Aston spilled secrets of the new DVD. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Which he didn't, but yeah, yeah, yeah. we got so much don't traffic. Yeah, don't we got all so out there. much traffic from oh, that. Yeah. And I actually got a, this is, remember, this is, this is 2003. Like, I didn't have a video camera at that time, so I had a camera that had a little clip of video, so I got him to do a Who Mag drop, which I still use to this day. Hey, man, right. hey, yes, absolutely, cool. absolutely. And that's the crazy the part story. was, like, I tell my daughter, ah, look, that's the end of this guy from one of the rooms. like, yes, yeah, so. Yeah, she don't even get it. But then, but then, but then Stranger Things, yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah, you remember him? Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Really? For real? <laughs> yeah. Stranger yeah. Things is about to come back for a new season. Yeah, for a new I'm season. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward that. to it. Yep, I'm looking forward it. to yep. it. Yep. Yeah. So you are also a member of the Grammy board. Uh, I've seen that. Um, what is that like? What is the process like for voting for like awards and everything? Like, how does a person even? end up on a Grammy board. I always wondered about that. Like, so how there's, how different, selection. there's different levels to the Grammys. There's the regular membership, mm-hmm. there's the voting membership, which I am, mm-hmm. and there's the board member. So I'm not a board member, but I'm mm-hmm. a voting member. So basically, I get to vote in the Grammy considerations. Mm-hmm. So I had this year, I, we had 29 Grammy considerations from our distribution company. Oh, that's awesome. Um, they gets narrowed down to five, which we all know is the nominations, mm-hmm. and then there's the winner. Okay. So, I get to vote for all that. Mm-hmm. I sit down, you know, sit down my daughter. You know, I don't let her vote, but I let yeah. her see the I'll process. Because I'm, te- I'm teaching her. Mm-hmm. The business. To, yeah, teaching her the business. So yeah. she loves it. She looks forward to it all the time. She yeah. tells her friends, I don't daddy with the Grammys. You know, yeah. you know? um, yeah, but it's it's cool, man. I've been a member for like seven, eight years. I got a certificate. Actually, I just hung it up on the wall right there in the corner. Um, oh. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, okay, yeah. You know, I got my invitations. I get invited every year. All the invitations are. Yeah, for the Grammys. Um, so you've been to that. How many times no, have you actually? I never actually went. No, I never went because what happens is, you have once they announce they're for sale, mm-hmm. you literally have ten seconds <laughs> to get your, your to buy your seats or it's sold out. Yeah. So the one year they came to New York two years ago, I said that's it. I'm going. Mm-hmm. So I told my boy Nick. Mm-hmm. I said, listen, because we're both members. At this time exactly, you got to submit it. So. I was already to submit. I said, hurry up, you ready, you ready? He took too long. The time I submitted, we didn't get the tickets. Damn. Oh, I was writing it on That would have been, yeah, that would have been yeah. live in New York. Now LA, now it's back in LA again, so. Yeah. yeah. But I did hear, you know, friends that go, you know, you sit around, it's like nine hours. Yeah, yeah. See, I heard it that long. It, you see it on TV, it's like two, but it's really like nine hours. That's a whole yeah. big process, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah, so. Sure. A lot of people go and just don't go to the Grammys. They go to yeah. the parties. Yeah, they go to have yeah. a good time. Yeah, which. I don't know. Can't the be mad only thing is, it's so close to the Winter Music Conference, which mm-hmm. I go every year in Miami. It's mm-hmm. like 
putting the dance music because the biggest conference in the U.S. Okay. Yeah. And I have a dance music show as well. Mm-hmm. So I go down there on VIP everywhere down there. Oh. All the Sirius XM things. And, you know, I have so much fun there. I just, I can't do both because of the kids. Mm-hmm. So I pick one and I usually just, you know, I still want to go to Grammys one year. I will go. Yeah. Just but but I actually, I have, the, I have a Grammy right. award-winning record I distribute too. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Shout out to that. What's it called? You really want to know? Yeah. So my Grammy Award winning record, Absolutely. back up to my, to my, the vault of tricks, <laughs> so Mr. So Rogers, Mr. So Rogers, get the hell out of here. one best children's album, did you meet wow. Mr. Rogers, damn, <laughs> about to say. but it's all famous singers like John Cicada, Amy Grant, was well, this from the new, the movie yeah, that you put this out, this is before, oh, okay, this is before, this is wow. when, yeah, it's when, this like 10 years ago. This is I would have never guessed that. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody would have. Uh, uh, so the Grammys are actually going to send me a certificate because those are, they only give out one Grammy. Okay. So the producer got it. I'm just the distribution company. Uh, so. But I was like, thinking like, damn, how do I get something? So I reached out to the Grammys and they said in February, they'll mail me a certificate. An official Grammy certificate for the record. So oh, I'm excited about that. That's dope. Let's go. Um, yeah, so being a member of the Grammy board, there's a lot of controversy around the Grammys and like hip hop. Do you feel as though there's anything that they could do to get like a better representation of hip hop in the Grammys? Because people are complaining that like, I don't know, like the Grammys are not really. You can't please all the people all the yeah, time. Yeah. I mean, I've always felt that way. Even yeah. with Mystical won. I know disrespect to Mystical. Right. But I was like, how did he win? Right. What he won? And that was, and I'm, I've always. You know, I'll go back when the Grammys were started, when there was the big boycott. Uh-huh. Had, Will Smith. Yeah, when Will Smith yeah. got him, they boycotted. Yeah. So, I was always anti-Grammy, and so I actually became a part of it. Uh-huh. And, um, I mean, people get to vote for everybody they want to vote for. Like, people, the, 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 the Latin Grammy is going to say the same thing. Right. It's anyone voting for, not the Latin Grammy, so for best Latin artist, or best country artist, anyone could vote. And the Latin Grammys, that's just like a whole that, separate a whole committee, separate, yeah, a whole that's, separate that's, everything. That's, but yeah. there is best Latin record as part of the Grammys. Okay. There's also best like say best bluegrass. Okay. If I wanted to vote for it, I could. Okay. And I don't know bluegrass. Mm-hmm. Right. But if my homies nominated, right. they have a bluegrass vote for me. I vote for them. Yeah. Right. So right. that's so you gotta remember that too. Yeah. And and you gotta remember this the way it works too is like even again, not like, you know, put anything bad on the Grammys because I'm glad I'm a member. Mm-hmm. Um it's mostly labels involved. So that's what when Macklemore got when he won. Yeah, it that's the big That was, was that was the one of my big, generation that was like. Yeah. It was such a big deal. Yeah. Because the reason the tickets sell out so fast is because the labels buy the blocks out, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and they're all it's a nonprofit. Right. The Grammys is nothing but a big nonprofit. Mm-hmm. So when the labels are out there, it like, I, and I'm not you know saying anything you know putting any, any assumption there, but like, let's say Arista Records uh-huh. has one of their artists. All the people from the labor are going to vote for the same record. That's right. Because they want, Arista wants to win. Right. Sony wants to win. Right. So they're not going to say, so if you're an employee of Sony Records, you're not going to vote for somebody on a different label. Right. You'll be like, yo, we need to make this for win. Because right. then everybody wins. Right. Yeah. So I get it how people get upset with, which I am, you know, I looked at the, the considerations this year. I'm glad Royce the Five Nines in there. Definitely. I'm a huge fan of his. It seems like they're going in the right direction this year. Yeah, I'm glad because I'm a huge fan of his, mm-hmm. man. He's like an MC. Yeah, you know, right. Latin MC, and, you know, Nas. Even though I didn't totally love Nas's album, I'm still glad that he was recognized. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But seeing Royce, to me, was a big deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's well deserved. It's yeah, been a sure. long time coming. Yeah, for sure, for both of them. Yeah. And uh, Freddie yeah. Gibbs, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah definitely Freddie Gibbs. Definitely. So um, how long? How long? Oh, you said you said it started in two thousand and one, right? Mm-hmm. How do you keep yourself to be able to withstand the time into twenty twenty? Because that's a long time. That's that's like some people's. That's out here moving around in clubs and shit. That's damn near their whole life. Yeah. So what 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 type of tricks to the trade do you give? Without telling everything. I'll but, tell you everything. You know what I'm saying? I'll tell you number one thing is you have to be honest. There's so many snakes in this industry, and yeah. the secret to longevity is. Don't be a snake. Because right. I've seen every three years is like a new cycle of people. Right. Because I saw the snakes get, you know, they make a lot of money mm-hmm. and then they stop because it, get, it gets out there and they leave. Right. And then the new snakes come out. And you keep seeing it happening, but if you're just honest with everybody, 
and you now have to get people's money, mm-hmm. you have to really do what you love to do, it's going to take you longer. Right. You know, it's slow and steady, but that's what it is. And that distribution company's been out for 10 years. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, we have our biggest months these last couple of months. Okay. Um, we have 39 releases in November. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, I was on a call with the head of uh, DistroKid two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And he was bragging how they get 20,000 uploads a day. Yeah. I get 850 total. But I know every single one of my artists. I right. called them. During that pan- when this pandemic hit, one of my friends actually committed suicide. It was in the film industry. So it made, me think, yeah, it, made, it made me think about it a lot. And I, I, by watching social media, and you remember, like, especially with artists, like, a lot of their income comes just from touring. It's mm-hmm. done. So I actually called like all my artists off just to check on them. Mm-hmm. And I just called, hey, just call and see how you're doing. Mm-hmm. Make sure everybody's cool. And I yeah. think that little things like that, People, yeah. you know, because I generally care. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, big corporations can't really offer that. No, right. no, I, they got millions of yeah. artists. It's and all and you, you know, email, them. random customer service, right. get a right. random answer. Right. Really, I know all my artists. They know they can call me 3, 4, 5 a.m. I'll, right. I'll be up. Okay. Right. You know, if I'm not, my ringer's off, no one's bugging me. Right. I take care of me in the morning. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, I think this is one of the secrets of keeping longevity is being honest. It's also being fluent. And being proactive, like the industry is going to change. If you say this is yeah. all I'm going to do, you're going to be stuck. You're, you're, you're going to yeah. be stuck because yeah. when it's over, yeah. when this pandemic hit, before it hit, let's see, I had three music TV networks, three music TV shows, the film company, the music distribution company, and I had the comedy show we do once a month with Bob Sumner. Mm-hmm. All this going on. People are like, how do you do so much? It all ties in its own way. Yeah. yeah. But when COVID hit, the whole film production company shut down. The TV shows shut down. Mm-hmm. The music TV networks got bigger because everyone's getting Netflix now. Yeah. Right, right. And everyone was finding my networks, yeah. right. which is great. Right. And the music distribution, at first it was slower because people couldn't go to studios. But just like the gyms, everyone started buying their own gyms, everyone started buying their own studio. Mm-hmm. So everyone's making more music now. Mm-hmm. Everyone's tired of dealing with the distro kid, TuneCore, CD Baby, do it yourself. They want a real distribution company that could talk to somebody. Mm-hmm. And we just been packed. And we're very selective. We pick up, I'd say probably one out of four records lately. It's Which is good because you got to be able to, it's you my know. Brand. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly, my brand. exactly. I don't, I don't, I don't pick up whack records. Absolutely. And that's one Perfectly thing I say. And we pick up all genres. Yeah. Have, as you see, we are Grammys and kids records. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we have country, we have rock, we have spoken word, comedy. Yeah, it's no it's no such thing as like, you know, just pick it for something. If it's good, it's good type yeah, thing. But there's, you know two, there's, there's two things I look for. Number one, the course of the music. Number two is the person. Yeah. I call every single artist to talk to them because... I gotta see if we buy it because yeah. when we sign a contract, we gotta talk to each other. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we gotta be I, able to. Bench. I don't wanna sit there and be like, oh man, this guy's calling me again. Right, right, I don't right, even right, wanna right. talk to him. Yeah. Right. I wanna be like, yo, what's up, homie? What we got? What's yeah, going on? Word. What we got next? Word. And, and, and it's the energy, man. I, gotta, I put a lot of positive energy out there. I work with a lot yeah. of good people, and to me, that's the most important thing is. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I feel like I'm back a nine to five job. That's right. why I was doing the music videos. I was at one point I was taking every music video I could take because yeah. I needed the money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and it wasn't more about the the feeling than the, the money. It became I a business. Angry people. So. I had you know the videos of people I was dealing with people just getting. It was just wasn't. I was like, damn, I might as well run back to finance. Yeah, <laughs> I have a friend that was doing music videos, and he stopped doing that to do something else. It could be just do the same thing. He got tired of dealing with rappers, people, complaints. And then, like, people don't want to pay on time, or but see, that's my videos. And I charge more. I charge between five to seven thousand a video. Okay, so you're dealing with labels and people yeah, that's officially so, who have a budget who's coming in, yeah, budget wise. Okay, yeah, but I remember going to a friend of mine did a video, mm-hmm. and he wanted to hire me direct it, and he told me the budget. I said, listen, he's my dude. I said, you're my dude. I can't direct your video, but let me assist in directing. You direct it. Okay. Let me help you with it. I'll be your assistant director. Just pay me this little bit of money. Right, and, right. and you take all the credit. And because you're my boy, I'll walk you through it. Cool. So then he had a behind the scenes camera guy there. And this was 2013, maybe. Mm-hmm. So I was talking to the behind the scenes guy. And he said, We're talking. He goes, Yeah, I do music videos. So I'm like, Cool. I'm, you know, I was like, Ask me, you know, how much you choose to charge? I said, yeah. You know, I, I don't want to put too much out there because of this video. Mm-hmm. But he said, You know, I charge a couple thousand. You know, depending on what it is. Mm-hmm. I said, Really? Oh, Matt charged 50 bucks. I'm like, you pay, you charge $50 to do a music video? He's like, yeah. But how many videos do you do? He goes, I do like three or four a day. Oh, he say he walks down the street, where he, where he is, 
put his camera up in the air. Everyone runs out of the houses, give him 50 bucks, he films it, comes back the next day, gives him the videos. So I'm like, editing. that's whack, he's but that's a hustle. Is he's grind, he's definitely on the grind, but he he's selling this, if he makes short. If he makes $200 a day, doing what he loves to do, that's I a can't, win. That's a win. I can't be mad at him. Well, you're building your clientele base. I so. can't be mad at him, yeah. but I told him, I said, the problem is, because he was trying to tell me how to do bigger videos, I said, you're not. Everyone knows you as a $50 video guy. As soon as you tell them it's 70 like, someone, else is, someone else is going to pop up for 40 mm -hmm. Right, right. When you're dealing with that clientele. Yes, yeah, 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 for sure. And that's a lot of time on editing. Editing is what kills. It's not even shooting the video. Yeah, but the videos, editing. man. These guys are doing two or three locations. And film in front of a car. Film in front of a bodega. Film here. Yeah. The same shots over and over and over. Yeah. Me, I have shut down, like, horror parks. You know Halloween? Like, the horror parks you go to? Yeah. I shut them down where they pay a couple thousand whatever it may be, just to film there. I have red cams. Like, I have real behind-the-scenes camera people making real behind-the-scenes videos that are four, five, six minutes long. So you have actual sets going on yeah, and yeah. staff. And you never see the same scene twice in my videos. That's They're awesome. all storyboarded with stories. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, the way I do a, used to do a video was you give me the song. I would drive for, like, a week to two weeks in my car and just drive with the mm -hmm. song. Mm -hmm. Until I envision every single scene in my head what I want to do. Okay. Then I'd, go, then I'd write them all down. Mm -hmm. my, my stick figures and <laughs> put it, my, my sheet list my shot list my prop list everything and then just do a dope ass video that no one's ever seen and the, every video I do is something you've never seen before that's awesome you know yeah. gotta love that man gotta love that I mean, speaking of videos well terrible segue oh, but I gotta yeah, talk about the one of the uh, the award winning Pocono Film Festival best documentary oh, yeah. who mag document man i was i mean i gotta i gotta watch the whole thing but i just seen like the previews and the stuff that you got on youtube and like it's it's great uh how'd you get into like how'd you find all the like the basically like the legends and the founders of hip-hop because i see everybody on that yeah. thing like yeah. how was that how was going about finding those guys you know the award is at my house yeah wish i had it here but the award is at my house mm -hmm. um and the dvd um, so, that's a good question, man. Um, I started Humag 2001. Mm -hmm. We did a lot of music, um, interviews. I've interviewed, like, we, between me and my boy, Will, who works for me in okay. Miami, we have over 3,000 interviews that we've done. Okay. So the idea initially wasn't to do a documentary, it was doing the videos for the interviews for the show. All right. But because I was such an old school hip-hop fan, mm -hmm. I had a lot of them. And everyone signs release forms. I have release forms on everybody. Mm -hmm. And it's one thing a lot of people don't do is, you know, I make sure I own everything. So there's no issues down the line. Mm -hmm. So um, I had all these interviews. I'm like, man, this, and I asked like stories about hip hop because I'm genuine. Like, you know, I know what I know, but mm -hmm. I love hearing these stories, man. Mm -hmm. So the original idea was to be a four part series. That was for part one. Um, for one was the history, two was the songs, three was the groups, and four was uh, more of a, a, a newer elements of what they're doing now type thing. Mm -hmm. And they put it together from Sugar Hill Gang, George Clinton, Run DMC, Grand Wizard of Theater, who created the Scratch, Grandmaster Kaz, Black Sheep, Chub Rock, Money About Nature, like everybody was in it. Mm -hmm. And um, I got into the Pocono Film Festival and it won Best Documentary. Um, Michael Rivera gave me the award. He's from the TV show Oz. That was on HBO. Yeah. yeah, so he gave me the award. It was and it was crazy because like the first place prize I got was a um it was like so you win a video camera. <laughs> In the second place you get all the stacks of B roll like uh not B roll, what's it called? Like stock images. It was like the stock image companies uh, filmed something, sponsored it. So I was all excited, I won. It was this like little flip cam. Right. right. Look at this, like, I don't want this. Y'all want that. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, right. right. <laughs> so they were like, they told the company, and the company mailed me one in the mail later, but it was kind of cool. But it was such, such a good time. I had so much fun. Um, hung out with Frank Reyes, who did, uh, what was that movie, with uh, Fat Joe, Rick Gonzalez. Um, Empire? Yeah. Yep. 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 Shout out with Empire. That's, one, that's, a, that's a good one. Awesome. That's a gym. Mm -hmm. And um, Carlos Berrios was part of that movie. Frank Reyes got the Lifetime Achievement Award. And it's funny because Carlos Barrios was part of that, and he's also one of the biggest legendary freestyle music producers of 
all the big freestyle, like underground freestyle music. But it's like, well, like, like that, like the, it's like, kind of like techno kind yeah, of. Yeah, but the old yeah. school, yeah. Yeah, the old school, yeah. yeah. Carlos Barris was like the OG producer. So I met him there, but now he came to the studio like a year ago. And I, we hung out, and now we're good friends, but I told him that story. There were some other stories that happened there, but. Yeah. Right. It right. was a, a nice little getaway for the Poconos, man. We had a good time, man, and it was just, it's, it was, another thing, a little side note, I was nominated for best music video, too. Okay. And what happened was I lost because I'm like, and I saw the video that won. I'm like, how the hell did I lose this? So what I did was, you know, I'm, I'm real strategic. You know, I got the head lady, at, and afterwards I got a real drunk. I bought a bunch of shots. <laughs> and I was like, you know, hanging out with her and her older, older, older friends. Yeah. Like, yeah, so by the way, how did I lose that? She goes, oh, Rob, you know you won that. I just couldn't give you two awards. And I figured right. the best documentary is better. I'm like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Right. And I was like, still one of the best video right. because I, my video career was booming at that time. Right. So I was like, man, that would have been good to have that. But I'm glad I got best director, mm -hmm. best film for a documentary because that's a little more, you know, holds more weight. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. In the long run, I'm, I'm glad it went the way it went. Okay. So shooting a hip hop document, um, I see you got, you got everybody from. Sugar Hill Gang, KRS One. Who was like your most interesting interview during that time period? Interesting? Yeah, and actually, how long did it take to like complete the whole documentary? <clears throat> so keep in mind, I did this while I had the day job. Oh, okay. So let me tell you how my, my mentality was at that time. I was at Merrill Lynch in Lawrenceville by Trenton. Um, so it was a 35, 40 minute drive to work each way. Um, they always had me working late, so I would get up, go to work, come home, be home by like 6.30, 7, right. my wife goes to bed at like 9, wait for her to go to bed, uh -huh. I'd change, uh -huh. I'd drive to New York, Whoa. and I, this is 2000, this is early 2000, the cameras were expensive, right. cell phones didn't have cameras, mm -hmm. you know, and I was like the only one allowed in with cameras at this time, right. and I would go to New York, hang out with Wife Lab, hang out with all these different people. Get home three in the morning, four in the morning, mm -hmm. and then take a two-hour nap, shower, go to work. Every day. Now the days I didn't go to New York, uh -huh. so my, my mentality was: if I'm working, every eight hours I work, I have to work at least four hours on the day, and that's mm -hmm. the way I thought. I made myself do it. Or you know, if it was if I worked ten hours in Merrill Lynch, I had to work five. Mm -hmm. Like I busted my ass every day and made that happen. So. That documentary may have taken me nine months to edit. And here's the thing. Once it came out and I won the award, I left Merrill Lynch. It was around the same time we got picked up. The TV show was picked up. And I had two offers for it to put out for distribution. Uh -huh. And the dist and other things just popped up on me. And now all of a sudden I left the job. Now I'm like, oh my God, I gotta figure out how to make money. You know, and the, the distribution companies wanted me to make these changes. And I'm like, all right, I'll go back and change it once I finish this other stuff up. Mm -hmm. And I never got back to fixing it. And next thing you know was when I was finally getting ready for it, everything switched from SD to HD. Mm -hmm. So I was like, damn, I got to redo the whole thing in HD now. What should I got to do is change the timeline at that time in order to make the, the, the size right. But and then everything turned blown for the, the music videos. And I lost the TV network and never happened. So the net, you can watch the documentary on my channels. It's still up there. Okay. It's, on the, it's on humagtv.com or the Humag Multimedia app on Roku, Apple, Google Play, Fire Stick, okay. everywhere. Um, it's in two parts, part one and part two. Mm -hmm. for first, the, part, the first one, because it, it, like, it was long. Um, but yeah, yeah, it never really officially was officially released because it's still an SD. Oh, okay. So, yeah, but... Yeah, it won the award, man. I'm, I'm still very proud of it, and it gave me a winning director. Right. Yeah. That's, yeah. Up, yeah, that's yeah. always good news. Yeah. That's yeah. always good news, man. Yeah. All right, I mean, we're going to switch gears. All right, we're going to get to current. What? what you want? Nah, I ain't doing no current shit. Well, I'm going to do, uh... Well, I got to get my quick tidbit yeah, off. Yeah, I got a couple yeah, currents. Uh, Let me do a little tidbit on currents, because I've been I've done a couple things. Yeah. I'm thinking about a little bit. <laughs> Hold on, let's pull it up. I was going to do your quick hits, John. Yeah, 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 boom. Oh, you can do that, but I just want to say, my nigga Wack 100 out here mixing it up with the Bulls. You feel me? He <laughs> tried to run down on Wack 100. He wasn't having it, so he got the squabble. Shout out to Wack 100, you feel me? Yeah. Earl Spence is a fucking technician. I don't know if we talked about that on the last fight. What, if you like boxing. that one. Errol Spence is boxing. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I missed that match. I missed oh, yeah, no, no, nah, nah, he, he's, nah, it was, nah, it was crazy. Yeah. But, Shout out Canelo, he just want to fight, but 
As far as boxing should be on the rise, look out for Shakur Stevenson. Young bull from Jersey. Super nice, and he don't be getting hit. Uh, <laughs> um, and his dad's got to get off the fucking drugs. <laughs> you feel me? That man got to chill. Yeah. I didn't catch it for Too Short versus E40. I and did, and that was, it, was, it, was, it was dope, man. This Bay Area? Yeah, Bay Area. E40, but, he had too much fun. Though. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Two of my favorite West Coast MCs. Yeah, the legends. Legends I, is absolute. And if I go back and really think about it, I think they probably like had the longest relevancy. I, mean, not, well, I don't want to say relevancy because it's still some older uh, artists that have it, mm. but like at a high level. Like they stayed at a high level for like for a, years. Yeah. They I stayed know. at the highest level for a long I think, time. I think I was, God, 10, 11. My dad took me to Chicago for his work. He was in the Navy. <clears throat> and I went to the record store and I saw a two short record. I've never seen one before. That's crazy. Yeah. And I bought it with the Born, Born to Mac. Yeah. So I bought it. So I, I bought every hip hop record I could find that because there weren't that many out. Right. Mm-hmm. Brought it home, and I listened to Freaky Tales. Oh, Freaky man. Tales, the legendary and Freaky Tales. I'm tale. like a little kid, like. Amazing. <laughs> like, what the hell? Turned it down, here? like. My poor ears. Like, yeah, this is crazy. So, <laughs> yeah, I listened to it over and over and over, right. and I became a huge Two Short fan since oh, yeah. that day. And E40, forget about it, man. Yeah. yeah. So, I've he 40 made a language in the game, so you can't even be mad. Like, he can talk his own way, and niggas know, like, that's 40. That's you know, 40 talk. They've been doing this since, like, the 80s. Yeah, 100%. 86. Yeah. Well, with, with, I remember E40 was already big, but see, they didn't play. Here's the thing about hip hop back in the day uh-huh. New York only played New York, Philly played New York and Philly. We never played anything from the West Coast, down south, yeah, nothing. Yeah, I can believe in it. the West Coast, they played West Coast and East Coast all the time. Okay. So when I moved out to LA, to work with Babyfaces faces guys um turn the radio station out there i'm here biggie and then e40 mm-hmm. all the time e40 was this is where the yayo came out i mm-hmm. back to selling yayo mm-hmm. and i was like oh my god this song is so dope yeah man and then that's the same time tq had that song uh west side but it was such a mix like every song was a west coast, east coast, of west coast. Yeah. and then it was a uh, miami or something you know not too much of the south mm-hmm. mix. Yeah. a little bit now and then and I was like, this is how radio really should be. Definitely. Just right. because, but now it's too much. Yeah, it's now they just play yeah. you, you the same records no matter where you go. You can yeah. go to L.A., Ohio, you can go to yeah. Atlanta. Yeah. Well, Atlanta yeah. seems like they play a lot of Atlanta artists, though. I mean, they probably do now because there's so many, so much more to pick from. Like, before, it was like, it was a lot of Atlanta artists. But now it's like, I could really just have a whole playlist and really crush the city yeah. with just Atlanta artists. I don't need yeah. to go to New York. But, like, most of the radio stations, they just play this. They got, it seems like they all have the same playlist. Right. <laughs> and our last thing, but not least, uh, shout out to anybody that got something to do with this DJ Screw biopic. I'm very interested in watching this because... I don't really know too much history, but I want to get to learn a little bit more about DJ Crew, rest in peace yeah. to that brother. So, yeah, that's it, man. That's all I want to talk about with Currents, man. You know what I mean? Don't uh, get you going to do your, uh... Yeah, um, so this is a little thing we do with our guests, you feel me? This is a rapid fire question, you feel me? Three questions real quick, you feel me? But you might need time to think because this is not just like your average one, two, boom, boom, you feel me? So, you got all the money. I'm talking about all the money. I'm talking about like <clears throat> the shit that, the type of money where... You just wake up and don't got no worries, like ever about anything. But you only have this kind of money for 24 hours. You get one day with it. And whatever you do with it, it's cool. But once it's 24 hours, it's up. It's over. So you lose it. Yeah. But you keep whatever, like. Whatever right, right, right. So what would you? how would you spend that time and that money? I buy an island and a boat and just, when it's up, I'm gone. You won't find me. <laughs> I like that. I like cool. that. I go fishing, I like I'm good. Yeah, you good money. I like that. All right, so you know what I mean. While you fishing, you probably won't need no shoes, but you might want to throw on a pair of nice pair of sneakers while you out on the boat or something. You might see a no long leg. I mean, you never know. You feel me? You get one pair of shoes, sneakers, boots, whatever, all different flavors, but one type. What would they be? Jet boots that make you fly. Oh, shit. <laughs> that's like, the first. I like, I, that's why I, you know, I, 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 I like these answers. Well, I want different. I don't do typical things, man. I want yeah, different. Y'all absolutely. Y'all, you absolutely. still walking? I'm flying. <laughs> yeah, so so why you so why you flying, right? Right. You got to have your theme music. You feel me? Like, you got to have something in the headphones, mm-hmm. right? But this is the catch. You only get one album. Just one. Mm-hmm. What would it be? For the rest of my life? Or is it a theme song? No, for the rest of your life. Why, why you, like, no, just why you got the money. Like, why are you doing your money shit? Like, so like I, have, I have my own theme song. Okay. The Who Mag song. So okay, okay. Fair enough. Enough. <laughs> but if I'd have a 
It no, was, it's an album. Like, you doing your 24 hours with this one album. You only can listen to this album for 24 hours. I think I've probably listened to the Mac soundtrack more than any record I've listened to in my life. <laughs> but it's going to be the Mac soundtrack or Sign of the Times by Prince or if I were to pick a hip-hop record. No, it don't got to be. It's whatever you feel. It don't got to be hip-hop. Just one, whatever you... Whatever you listen to while you're spending that money. Nothing but the sun. I will go with um, the Alcoholics, man. That's one of my favorite hip hop groups still. Right. Um, but yeah, then probably the Mac soundtrack. Okay. That's the with um, Willie Hutch. Okay. Which is amazing. Probably the least effort, most interesting. I don't mean effort as far as thought. I mean like it was a quit, like you knew already. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like I like that. So you know, rapid fire with your boy. You know what I'm saying? With your boy, tell uh, yeah. tell me and breeze. Uh, yeah. All right, we're going to switch the gears real quick. Uh, we'll just get this. Uh, usually every episode, we give uh, one special person or person, place, or thing. Uh, stone cold fuck out of here. And, uh, yeah, and I got one. You ready? Go ahead. Hit that shit. It's for you to Alright, <laughs> uh, you going first? Yeah, I can go first. Uh, yo, yo, sports be giving me a lot of ammunition lately, man. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta say, get the fuck out of here to the boy Juju, man. What? Yo, fam. Get the fuck out of here. You've been dancing on people's stadiums all year, right? Like on they signs and shit. We always 11 and 0. Y'all been jazzy. You said Juju? Juju like... Smith Shooter from the Steelers. Oh, I thought you meant like Juju the social media dude. No, yeah. I don't even know who that is, uh, but. What? Anyway. <laughs> Fuck he in the middle of the field doing his little salsa. Macarena, two steps. You know, they 11 and 0. He feeling himself. Mm-hmm. Did it against the Bills. They fucking lost. Did it against the, um, who they played for the Bills. I forget who I was beating the names. Anyway, did it on that team. Lost. But this time he did it on the Bengals field. Mm. And he died on the field. Like, literally? No, nigga. Not, <laughs> dude, the whole world would know. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'll be, I'll be too busy to watch. He football. got his shoulders clapped. Oh, okay. Coming across the middle. <laughs> thinking shit was sweet. Mm-hmm. Oh, you want to stand on? Oh, you want to stand on the middle of my field and play with my team? What? Hold this hit and hold this L. Mm. Still, is about to get bounced in the first round. They keep fucking around. Oh my god! Big Ben throwing the ball to anybody. But Juju, get the fuck out of here. I'm giving you this fuck out of here. Not because you did it. Not because you got cracked. And not because your team been losing. Mm-hmm. But because you putting on your pussy panties and saying you're not gonna step and dance in the middle of the field because of the betterment of your team. <laughs> you, got, you got that ass cracked. Nah, it's because you got fucking rocked. <laughs> Boy, you fumbled that thing and you was like, oh, falling, I can't get up. <laughs> now you don't want to dance on the middle. Now you don't, don't go back in the middle field with your football. <laughs> Three losses in a row. Y'all might get bounced in the first round. Fuck out of here, Juju. <laughs> Either stick to your guns or don't be doing that fancy shit. It's one or the other. Get the fuck out of here. But don't be for the betterment of your team. No, for the betterment of my team. I don't think I'm going to. Go to TikTok with that shit. Yeah, go ahead. Go to TikTok. All right, my fuck out of here. My fuck out of here is just a regular news cycle. I've just been doing a, a, a study, just listening to, like, you know, mainstream media news, like KYW, Fox News, Portrayed. all that stuff. Yeah. So, like, it just was like, yo, if you listen to that, you will think we are out here dying at 100 miles per hour. Yeah. Like, I just noticed, like, if you just listen to it, like, the background music, <laughs> in the background. Like, it's like, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> we are looking at a doomsday device. Like, like there was like, and another day in the morning. Like, <laughs> Philadelphia is parent, preparing for one of the worst days ever. Like, the lady literally said that yesterday. She said, like, I was saying something like the worst day of doom ever, but either way, man, they just like the, they're trying to scare the worst day of yeah, doom like, ever. Like, like COVID is killing somebody every fifteen minutes, which is probably true, but it's not the worst doom. But ever. they don't gotta say, bro. But if you listen, if like if I was just locked in a room and I was like I couldn't get out and all I could do was listen to the news, I would be thinking the world was on fire Collapsing. out there. Yeah. yeah, so my fuck out of here just to just the news like. And, and it's like they purposely like, they know what they be doing. Yeah, like y'all playing like the the panic music, like. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. The list, like oh my god, Philadelphia Get Bears is the worst day they've seen in twenty years. Somebody <laughs> needs to do something. Yeah, but tomorrow's man. even worse. Yeah, yeah. And don't worry, because tomorrow's gonna fucking suck. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, just fuck out of here to the news. Definitely fuck out of here to the news. And usually, as our guest, is anybody that you wanted to get the fuck out of here? Any person, place, or thing? I do. All right. 
you guys ever hear of Clubhouse? Yes. yes. <clears throat> so I've been on Clubhouse for a little while now. And it was Me really, it was really cool at first. But then you have all these new school people coming in, A&R's. trying to give, trying <laughs> yeah. to give advice to people. And I know some of these guys; they've done nothing their entire life. Yeah. But yet now they're on a soapbox telling people how to what to do in the music industry, and they're giving them complete wrong advice. Yeah. And people are listening. Like, really? That's what you have to do? Yeah. That and that's why I stopped going to clubhouse for a minute. You know what I'm saying? It's because it's too much of that right now. Fuck yeah. out of here, y'all! Stop yeah, selling yeah, yeah. dreams and false hopes, man. And artists. Please get your business oh right. Don't vote for that. Do your research. Yes, yeah, Let's I was on dudes. Clubhouse for one day. It was cool. I was on it like probably like two weeks ago, I think, or like last week, the beginning of last week. Yeah. And like this week, I think today, now starting to say, I think they like actually letting everybody in. But it was just like so many like A and R's uh, and dot connectors and people yeah. like Moves listen to me, play me your music. You might get a chance. Like, there's a whole bunch of that stuff going on, and they're just like, I feel like they ruined you, the you give me a thousand dollars, I can make this happen for you. Yeah. I feel like they, I feel like they ruined the exclusivity of it, because every time I heard about it, it was more it was cool. like, cool. you, you could get in, but just like, you got to be invited in, like, yeah. so bringing everybody oh, it was home. bad, now they're selling invites. Yeah, nah. But I think bad. after today, yeah, I think, or tomorrow, I think, <laughs> like, yeah, right. yeah, I think everybody is in, uh, yeah, I see people selling 50 bucks, nah, selling man. invites, and you know, it's... I think like the more rooms that you start, with the more like chat yeah, rooms you start, you get more invites. Yeah. Right. So people are just starting room after room after room, and then just getting invites and selling. And selling. That's crazy. That's so, crazy. Yeah. So I'm really yeah. not really a big fan. It was cool, like the first week, and then like now it's just like it's out of hand. My phone blows up all day. You've been pinged to join this room. You've been Yo. To join this room. You've been pinged to join this room. I had to turn room. the notifications off. Yeah. I can't even work because my phone keeps. Yeah. Uh, I it off. And the thing is, they go by your phone book. Yeah. I have a few thousand phone numbers in my phone. Right. Like, I've been in this business for a minute. If you would literally look at my phone, you would scroll, 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 and you'll be stuck on the A still. Right. Yeah. So my phone rings all day. So and so is on. I'm like, I haven't talked to this dude in 20 years. And now right. I, I still have. Because they want you to start a room for him or something like that. Yeah. 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 Welcome, Welcome in. into the. Yeah. And like, every time I see it, I'm like, oh, I wonder who it is. I click my mistake. And that yeah. room opens up. I'm like, oh, man. And get then it. you can't. You gotta got to close it. that shit to yeah. turn it off. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you got to close it, close it. But yeah, fuck out of here to Clubhouse. I can, I can curse. Get the fuck out that shit's of here. Became, that shit's become trash. But um, uh, one of our last segments that we want to get into is called "Would You Rather." It's basically when I ask you, "Would you rather do this or would you rather do that?" Um, simple questions. All right, would you rather have more money or more time? Time. Time. Absolutely. All right. Um, why? I'm not a money-driven person. To right. me, it's about I learn how to live for the quality of life. Right. At one point, I was chasing. Let's switch my day job. I was chasing every job I could take yeah. until I realized I don't have to. Mm-hmm. Me make enough just to pay my bills for the month, mm-hmm. and I stopped. Okay. And I spent all my time building the distribution, building the networks, building the residual income. So now, I really got to do a whole lot. You know, the residual income comes in every month. All my bills are covered. Right. So I'm enjoying the last couple of years. I've just been enjoying myself, doing things, taking vacations, spending time with the kids. Mm-hmm. Make money's coming in. I still keep growing. Don't get me wrong. I'm still working, but. Time is the most important thing by far. For sure, for sure. All right, Terry. So, as we can see, this world's going to shit. Pretty soon, they're going to be building planetariums for humans. In my situation, they're either going to build the underwater planetarium underneath the ocean, or on the moon. So, which one would you live in? Would you live under the ocean in the community under the ocean, or would you live on the moon? I live on the moon. On the moon? Yeah, uh, why is that? I love being on top of water. I can't swim. I hate being underwater. If something <laughs> collapses, you're done. Oh. If you unearth and you make it, you starve, you starve. You figure shit out. Yeah. But if you're drowning, that's one of my fears. Yeah, okay. So, no. All right. That's understandable. All right. So, you got a time machine, but you only can go one way. Would you rather go visit your grandkids in the future or visit your ancestors in the past? Grandkids. Uh, why is that? I mean, that's a good question. Um, just because I would like to know so I can tell them, you dumbass, you're doing the wrong thing. <laughs> Do this. The past is already done. Right, right, right. But the kids, you know, even if I come back and they don't even know who I am, mm-hmm. if I can help guide some of them in the right direction, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. 
Um, in our uh, last question, would you rather know how you're going to die or when you're going to die? When. When? Yep. Why is that? So I can plan around it. However I die, I die. You done, you done. But if I can know I can peace out, wrap the peace out, mm-hmm. hustle up, whatever you gotta hustle up, mm-hmm. pass on, mm-hmm. I can strategically work backwards and figure out a plan. Okay. That's dope. That's dope. Yeah. And that was our latest segment. Would you rather? It's Stella. Oh, like latest segment. Oh, hold on, yo, hold on. yo. Um, <laughs> last thing, last thing we like to do is uh, you know, hip hop. You know what I'm saying? So I like to do on this day in hip hop every Wednesday. A lot of the shit that we having on Wednesdays, but we wasn't here last week, so we gotta say rest in peace to the brother Charles Six, aka Charisma. He died on the uh, December 16th of 93. So rest in peace to that brother. Yeah, rest in peace. And, um, oh, yeah, that boy. Ecstasy. Yep, yep. That's what I was, uh, you got me right to it. Um, more recently today, and would you, I mean, I was about to say, would you rather? And on this day in hip hop, rest in peace to John X.C. Fletcher from Houdini. Mm-hmm. Rest in peace. And um, not to make it morbid, but DMX dropped flesh in my flesh, blood in my blood last uh, yesterday. Classic. On this day in hip hop. Mm-hmm. So. Something yeah, good yeah, out of you know. For the day, uh, that day in hip hop. Yeah. And um, before we get out of here, uh, who who mag just celebrated their ten year anniversary this past September? For distribution. Who for distribution. Uh, just just just. Who mag distribution? distribution. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Who mag multimedia started two thousand one. Okay. Yeah. Who mag TV two thousand five? No, two thousand. Who mag DVD two thousand five? Who mag TV two thousand seven? Who made multimedia 2010 and 2012 with iBeam? Yeah, a lot of anniversaries. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's a 10 year mark for the Who Mag distribution. Oh, okay. We have an award coming from the city of Philadelphia. They actually gave me, an, they're giving me an award. They already told me, they announced it. I just haven't gotten it yet because of COVID. Yeah, so yeah, they, yeah, one yeah. of these, they made me one another one of these. Oh, that's okay. dope. Okay. Yeah, resolution. That's dope. Yeah. Well, all right, for Who Mag as a whole, mm-hmm. what do you see Who Mag going within like the next 10 years? What is the plans for Humag for the future? Mm-hmm. You know what? We change all the time. We're very liquid and we flow with what changes. Mm-hmm. But um, I think my next major thing, well, this year we have a lot of plans for Humag distribution in 2021. We just signed a deal with Sony ATV, mm-hmm. which is the, biz- the biz- biggest music licensing company in the world. Michael Jackson started it. Mm-hmm. The Beatles are there, Rolling Stones, Beyonce, Post Malone, every- everyone's there. Mm-hmm. So now we just signed our deal. So now we can get all our artists placed to movies, TV shows, video games. That's a major step. We have two different financial companies that we're talking to right now to bring on board mm-hmm. to help out our artists. We have, we're actually, and this, no one knows this. I'm talking, to, you guys are actually the first to hear all this stuff. Exclusive, exclusive, exclusive. I'm exclusive, exclusive. sorry, I'm, no one knows this yet because we're going to announce it in January, but we have, we are doing something with physical CDs like mm-hmm. labels used to do back in the day. Mm-hmm. I'm getting more into that later. Um, but we're doing a lot of stuff. 2020, we're totally changing everything up again. Okay. Um, but in the future, future 10 years, I think one strategy that I'm going to work on, it's going to be a little slow grind, but to get it right, combine the movies more into it and movie distribution, which we already can do our own through our own platforms. But okay. we're now working on developing music, I mean, sorry, movie distribution wow. so we can have our ties with the Netflix, the Hulus, because we have so many great projects that come to us yeah. that we're now working on those relationships. So I want to see a full-fledged distribution that includes movies. Um, our TV networks are go- still growing like crazy. I had four offers just yesterday for Humag TV and Video Vision, one broadcast, three smart TVs. Um, so the deal, they just keep coming, man. But I don't know, man. I think I think ten years is too far ahead for me to see because I like changing the game every day. Yeah. I wake up, I was going to change it today. Like, we're going to yeah. yeah. kick ass today. Okay. You know, and that's you know. And as far as interviews are, I mean, you being the CEO and all, are you still doing interviews with people and like uh, artists, actors, and everything? Or that's a great question. Um, so for video vision. It's still very active, mm-hmm. and artists take over. So it's one independent artist. They have the whole half hour show to themselves. Okay. They introduce other people's videos, yeah. leading up to their video. But like Matthew Knowles, Beyonce's mm-hmm. dad, is mm-hmm. a big fan of the show. He flew out here from Texas twice Word. to be on the show. Um, 
Master Ace hosted the show with the Melinda's, UMC's, um, some members of Public Enemy, and Cooling Gang, um, but it's mostly independent artists. So we're very active with that. Mm -hmm. um, we're also with Humag TV. We slowed down a little bit with it and mm -hmm. DMTV. We did it pre-COVID, so it wasn't because of COVID. Mm -hmm. But we have a lot of interviews on the we about over 100 interviews you have to get to. Yeah. We get so many of them. Yeah, um, so. so right now we're a little paused with it, but if we have the if we have them, we're putting them on the networks without right. the show. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna bring it back. Right. It's just a matter of we're now hiring more people. Start next month. We have new people coming on board mm -hmm. from Mac, mm -hmm. and um, we're gonna start changing things up and making it bigger, better. Okay. All right. So I th I was asking that to ask. What would be a dream interview of yours to a person that you haven't got a chance to sit down and speak to in an interview yet? Mm -hmm. um, who would that be? Quincy Jones. Quincy Jones? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That definitely would be a great interview. I've read his book. I've seen that Quincy article Jones. that you put out. <laughs> I remember the most influential book I've read was the autobiography, the autobiography of Q. Okay. Because I was still young when I came out and I read it. And the scene where he went through in his life to get to where he is mm -hmm. and things he'd been through and... And I was going through a really hard, uh, rough patch in my life at that time. So, um, inspired me a lot. And he's a genius in music. Like, yeah. I mean, we can talk about Thriller and Bad. We can talk about Off the Wall, but we can talk about his rap albums too. His orchestration. And I mean, he was. I don't know if you know. Scores for movies. Story oh. with Frank Sinatra. Of, like the stuff he's done, it's crazy, man. So I would love, I would love to sit down with Quincy Jones one day. Wow. The other person will be Stevie Wonder. Uh, I mean, and I, I guess that's that. I mean, where can the people find you at? I'm easy, man. It's Humag. Humag. W-H-O-M-A-G. HumagTV.com. Uh, every social media is Humag. Um, if you want to watch my networks, if you have a Roku, Apple, Google Play, Fire Stick, look up Humag Multimedia, look up Video Vision, and look up iBang TV. I don't know Awesome, awesome. And there you have it, man. This has been another episode of OTS Podcast, Off the Shits Podcast, if you are allowed to curse on some of these networks. And <laughs> and uh, we have the homie Rob Schwartz in the building. We're in his building. Yeah. Shout out to everything you got going on here. The legendary, just legendary shit going on around here, man. Not going on. And uh, we out this bitch, eh? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, man.